Last week, Vladimir Putin publicly announced that Russian economy has recovered from the international sanctions. I quote, The stage of recovery of Russian economy has been completed. The country has withstood the sanctions pressure. The recovery of Russian economy has been completed. The country has withstood um, the sanctions pressure. Now, as an economist, I strongly disagree with this Putin statement. But you know what? He is the president of Russia, after all, and his words cannot be empty. There's got to be something underneath them. And in this stream, I investigate what lies beneath Putin's words that Russian economy has recovered and try to estimate how long Russian economy will last under current conditions. Howdy, howdy, everyone. My name is Konstantin, and welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian. What you will not find here is propaganda, BS, or lies. What you will find is truth, common sense, and logic, and emotions, because I am a human being. I share my message for about 30 minutes or so, and um, invite you to join me in the live stream chat, where we uh, talk and I answer questions. And now to the message. There are still many people in both Russia and in the West who believe Vladimir Putin. The Westerners don't have a chance to go and see what's really going on with Russian economy. They can't go to a food store nearby and see how much food prices have gone up. See, uh, there are, now there are so few, so much, <laughs> so fewer products to Western products to choose from, you know, at the stores. Uh, they can't see how much uh, more you have to pay for your utilities, how many new taxes and fines there are, etc. Um, so they can just believe what Putin says. I call it grass is greener on the other side of the street effect or syndrome, and I understand that. After all, there were some people <laughs> in the West uh, who thought that life in the USSR was good. And then there are many Russians who believe Putin. This phenomena is much harder to understand, but it's real. And us, me and you, watching me right now, no. Let's not take his words for granted. Let's investigate. First things first. I am pretty sure that Vladimir Putin is fully informed. He knows all the data on the country's economy performance, all the trends, all the statistics. He knows more than any one of us. I'm pretty sure that KGB supplies him with everything he needs to know. Or at least KGB does the fact checking on what other agencies bring him to read and study. Yet, Vladimir Putin tells us that recovery of Russian economy has been completed. The country has withstood the sanctions pressure. That made me believe that he lives in a parallel reality. He just doesn't see what we see. I call it, you know, his parallel world, world where he lives, uh, Barbie land. Everything is perfect in his Barbie land. His world is perfect. He has everything he needs to. Everything is attended. He has an entire branch of the government servicing him alone. It's called Управление делами президента Российской Федерации, or in English, Management of Assets of the President of Russian Federation. The management body, body you know, just the office workers, so to speak, is a team of 528 employees. You think it's a lot? Well, think twice. Um, the, this organization, it has some assets too. And the assets include more than a thousand land plots of various sizes. Uh, hey, they're all very large, you know. Uh, also includes over 3,000 
300 buildings, over 2,500 different size residential and non-residential premises, 37 aircraft, and more than 5,000 cars. Add to that a few tens of, tens of thousands of maintenance and security employees. Russian taxpayers pay around 117 billion rubles. That's roughly 1 billion 200 million US dollars every year for that Barbie land. Impressive numbers, aren't they? <laughs> Russian Barbie land must be a marvel. Well, at least for one person. The beloved supreme leader, His Excellency Vladimir Putin, and his family, and his close friends, and probably old colleagues from the KGB, and perhaps a few other people he invites uh, and cares for. Uh, perhaps 100 people in total, or something like that. Not bad, not bad. Um, 1 billion, 200 million um, US dollars daily, every single day. Oh, I'm sorry. Weekly, every, no, not day, every single year. Um, must be nice. W well, uh, guess what? I don't think Vladimir Putin understands the concept of money. I doubt, I doubt he's, um, he's been to a food store or at least, uh, you know, for any kind of a store for at least around 23 years, you know, and for a good reason. Uh, Barbiland takes care of everything. Any wish, no matter how small or extravagant, is, it becomes reality, becomes true. Um, yet Vladimir Putin tells us that the recovery of Russian economy has been completed and the country has withstood the sanctions pressure. What does he mean by that? The answer is actually very simple. The abstract numbers. To Vladimir Putin, Russia's economy recovery is uh, simply seeing two numbers. First is GDP, or gross domestic product, and the second is importing of foreign goods volume. That's it. To Putin, Russian economy recovering means uh, that GDP is up from 2022, not by a big number, but, you know, a positive, a, a growth. Uh, now, GDP is monetary measure of the market value of all the final goods and services produced in a specific time period by a country. To judge country's economy overall performance just by looking at its GDP dynamics is simply wrong. Any economist will tell you that. It takes so many more uh, indicators to actually judge economy's health. You know, on top of that, current GDP growth in Russia is totally artificial. It's been fueled by the military spendings. Almost one third of the economy is military production right now. You know, stop that military production now and the economy landslides immediately the very next day. I'll give you an analogy. It's like a person not feeling well whatsoever, is sick with something serious, can barely walk, can barely breathe, and is running for high fever. So that person takes a fever suppressant medicine, and the fever kind of like drops down to normal. Uh, and um, uh, right before the doctor's visit, and the doctor shows up, and she, the doctor checks body temperature, just one indicator, body temperature, and it's normal. And it says, well, your body temperature is normal. You've recovered. Congratulations. And this is what's happening in Russian economy. Okay. Um, it's highly feverish. Government spending infusing money into the in military industrial complex spending on uh, war, on making all things military is like taking 
fever uh, depressing drug. Okay. And the second number that Putin has in mind is importing the foreign goods. It has very little indication of economic recovery. Yet, Putin makes conclusions based on these two numbers. For one simple reason. Because he doesn't have anything else. Once in a while, he tries to brag about record low unemployment. But that's a disaster. It's, you know, disaster rather than something to be proud of. Not one more positive dynamics or of any economic indicator. Not one. So, judging on these two things, he foolishly makes assumption that Russian economy has withstood all the sanctions pressure. Yeah, right, genius. And... Um, that's what bar living in a Barbie land does to you, you know. Putin's completely detached from the real world. To understand what's going on in the real economy, all you have to do is walk around a mid-sized Russian town. Not Moscow, not St. Petersburg. Those are different countries altogether. Real Russia, small town Russia. Prices are going up. Salaries aren't catching up with the prices increases. Business is closing. Uh, the mobilization is still going on. The government remains to be the biggest employer of everyone, okay? Not, not a good picture. Four trillion rubles have been infused into the salaries of um, military industrial complex employees, basically who uh, work providing the front lines with weapons, and those who are fighting in Ukraine at the front lines. This has also been a ticking bomb, because that 4 trillion rubles are a strong driver of inflation, and inflation is not a good thing for an economy. Uh, some experts forecast high inflation starting this fall and hitting 40% next year, uh, first half of next year. And it's hard to disagree with them. At least I agree. You know, I think they're spot on. By the way, there are around 4 trillion rubles left in the savings account still. Ha 4 has been used up and 4 still left, but <clears throat> it'll be used up quickly as there's been an announcement that Russia is going to double the military expenses in 2024 on top of um, 2023, that's been quadrupled. Okay, so that's just absolutely crazy number. And that 4 trillion rubles is going to go very, very fast. Oh, now... Let me explain you what will happen in Russia in the next six months and how much longer Russian economy will last for. You know, um, I've broken um, everything I want, I, I want to say. I've broken down into a few parts. Uh, number one, inflation will become risk number one in the Russian economy. It has already become this big risk, and the, the central bank has been trying to fight it, but it will increase as risk. Russia's central bank will be trying to keep inflation uh, increase under control, somewhat normal, and uh, Russian central bank has only one tool, key interest rate, to, to fight the, to slow down inflation the central bank will have to raise the key interest rate. I'll remind you, in July it was 7.5, now it's 13. There's been two raises already, actually three raises. 13 is incredibly high. High, high, high. And it will greatly increase in the next 16 months. Uh, in the next six months, I apologize, six months. My forecast, uh, the key interest rate will be somewhere south of 20%. And that's, that's, for any economy, it's a catastrophe. What does it mean in the real life? More businesses will be closing. It'll be hard for them to survive with money being so expensive. 
more Russians will be defaulting bank loans and mortgages because over 70% of borrowers now take out loans to pay off previous debts, previous loans. With high key rate, they won't be able to do that any longer. They, they wouldn't be able to afford. It'll become just too expensive. And commercial banks will be in trouble. Uh, there will be a wave of um, defaults and real estate will go next. It'll take a huge blow because real estate is directly connected with, you know, commercial banks. Expect no more new construction and real estate prices will drop if measured in the U.S. dollars. So that's what expects a Russian economy. That's number one. Number two, Russian ruble will keep on devaluing. The biggest reason for that is shortage of hard currency, U.S. dollars, inside Russia. The companies who still export anything, you know, oil, gas, uh, whatever, there are a few companies, not many, but a few who export mostly oil and gas. They sell oil and gas and everything for $4 overseas, but they don't rush to bring back their dollars, dollar revenues back to Russia. Um, two reasons for that. First reason, it's become too expensive because uh, Russian banks are sanctioned, swift, turned off, and uh, you know, all these companies, they must create um, a chain of transfers to get money back into Russia. And that is, takes much longer and it's uh, much more expensive compared to regular SWIFT transfers. And the second reason, uh, well, um, political risks are too high. Why would you bring money back to Russia? Russia is the worst place to have your uh, currency right now. And the government, uh, there's a good chance the government won't steal it. And there's a good chance that once money inside Russia, you get under sanctions, won't be able to take it out. Um, and what are you going to do with them in Russia? So, but the Russian government also doesn't sleep. Uh, it's ready to take it or how they like to call it nationalize it at any sing at any any second of time my forecast russian ruble will be trading at around 150 by next june and i'm be i'm be <laughs> i am being very conservative in my estimation perhaps even higher but let's let's get this number 150 uh rubles russian rubles for american dollar what does it mean in real life? Prices of almost everything will be rising. Remember, Russia does not produce anything but buys everything for American dollars. The higher the interest rate, uh, the higher the exchange rate, the higher the prices are. Number three, there will be increasing attempts to control and regulate economy from the Russian government. We'll see the introduction of new taxes, new bans, new limitations, new fines. The government will be trying to stabilize parts of the economy, interfering, but um, such interference will be very harmful in the long run. We will see certain government actions by the end of this year, not too long from now, uh, and... I take it there will be many new regulations, and we are seeing one unfolding right now, and that is the gasoline. Uh, refined oil products now are banned to be sold outside Russia. So that's, I'll make a stream on that sometimes this week. That's pretty interesting and pretty dramatic situation, you know. Number four, Russia will continue to lose its people on the front lines and to foreign countries. People will continue to depart steadily now and for years to come. And a lot of people will die at the front lines. <clears throat> what does it mean in real life? Uh, folks, you know, one word. Degradation. 
Number five, there will be crises, crises in certain industries. Right now, in Russia, there are four pretty bad situations going on. They range from um, industry crisis to a disaster, okay? There are four things. First is shortage of fuel throughout Russia. Uh, it, it was simply more profitable to sell fuel outside Russia, to sell gas and diesel outside Russia than inside Russia. So basically all the oil refining companies, they started taking their fuel outside and <laughs> Russians were left without fuel. So Russian government is interfering. But this is a big, big crisis. Prices are going through the roof for gas and there's simply shortages. Then wheat overstocking. Russians cannot sell wheat anymore and um, they're having pretty good harvests year after year. The price of wheat is dropping. Number three, shortages of certain medicines. That's a real disaster because uh, right now we're talking about insulin and insulin-like medicines that are not sold in Russia anymore. Uh, antidepressants are not sold in Russia anymore. And then things like uh, they threaten life, lives of people. Uh, and the government well, you just can't do anything about it. What can you do? And number four, overstocking of newly constructed apartments and houses. There is a crisis happening in the real estate, uh, in the construction industry. Construction of houses and apartments and real estate. So this is what we're seeing currently. And there will be more, more crises like that. Uh, they are right around the corner in many industries. And um, all that combined can, you know, turn into an ugly situation. Now, let's talk about um, when. When we will see something pretty darn bad compared to Prigozhin's mutiny, you know. Um, first of all, I already think, I, I think that already right now, Russian economy is majorly not well. It's running a huge deficit. It's making little and spending much. Remember, it's lost majority of its bread making and it has increased, <laughs> has found military spendings, you know, this in crazy numbers. That alone can kill Russian economy. Well, I shouldn't say kill, not kill, but um, put it into a very depressed state. And to top it off with over 3 million Russian men, the bread makers uh, among people, you know, uh, the cream of the crop have left. And that's pretty darn bad. Um, Russian economy is supporting the war and satisfying huge appetites of uh, military industrial complex. You know, all the president's men. Prices for everything have gone up and the wages aren't catching up and the situation is dire, and if you ask me. Of course, there are many people who downplay the situation saying, oh, look, we live, we breathe, there's something to eat at the shelves of the stores, you know, there are jobs available. Yes, that's true, but, uh, you know, that's a very uh, tunnel-like vision uh, you gotta, you gotta look at the big picture. I think it's fairly safe to say that Russian economy can live in this sinking Titanic mode for a few more months, and around next February or March, it will be terminally sinking on the bottom. So mark my words, please. Um, I this is what I think how long Russian economy will last for. And uh, uh, I tried to show you the difference between Putin's Barbie land and real economy current situation, you know. It must be nice to be living in Barbie land when you have so many tens of thousands of people cater to you. But the rest of us, we live in the real world. And this is what we are facing. 
And folks, this has been my message for today. Uh, thank you very much for coming, watching, and listening. I invite everyone to join me in the live stream chat where I'll answer your questions. And uh, while I am turning the live stream chat on, as usual, I'd like to ask you a favor. Would you please consider to help me spread my message by liking it and making reposts in your social media accounts? YouTube algorithm absolutely loves that. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee or a tea, um, you know, I wouldn't mind. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. And the uh, live stream chat is on. There you go. This is my most favorite minute of the stream when I uh, turn the button and so many people come, this chat comes alive, so to speak. Howdy, friends. Fantastic to see everyone. Um, I'm having a little different setup today. I hope you like it. I think the picture is better. Um, now I just have to <laughs> figure out how to not to look away from the camera much while I'm looking at the live stream chat messages. I'll ditch the headphones. Hang on one second, please. Um, if you're here for the first time, I'd like to tell you that this channel enjoys the best mod team in the world. Lorna, Mami K, Bob S, Harry Potman, and Prince Amir Fazad, the fantastic mods, the best in the world, really. Uh, and the usual suspects, the best community. Thank you so much for coming. I see so many people. Um, of usual suspects fantastic to see thank you i hope you liked my message looking forward to hearing your feedback thank you um as usual if you want me to notice your message easier then please put it in all caps and put inside russia after ad sign so it appears highlighted in large orange box that way i see it so much easier thank you um Michael Silberg, thank you so much. Yesterday's message shows how it happened. Was there ever a time in Russia when police answered to the judicial branch? No, there wasn't. If not only military, but also police both answered to the president, how could democracy have any chance? Michael, I've um, addressed this issue many times and perhaps should make another video on that. Not too many people know in Russia that the USA does not have a police force in a way that the Russians know. Because to Russians, police force is a very centralized structure, a ministry, okay, with a head in Moscow. And, uh, you know, Moscow makes decision, the head makes decision and gives the, all the decision to um, the people, the police, policemen underneath. In the United States, police serves to the locals uh, and paid by locals, towns, you know, cities, villages, and they don't answer to Washington, okay? And <laughs> when I learned that, I was blown away. I couldn't believe it, okay? I, like, triple checked. It's insane, okay? Uh, there's a huge difference. And you're absolutely right. Uh, police answers and takes orders from those who pay the police, who pay the salaries. And if it's people, then police is to serve and protect the people. And if it's uh, the president, to serve and protect the president. Okay? And the people? Well, not in the picture. So, thank you so much. That's a very deep um, understanding. Thank you. Um, Cerveza, thank you so much. Welcome to Inside Russia. Sponsorship, I appreciate very much. New sponsor. Uh, please come back on Saturday. We have private live streams for sponsors and patrons. 
more uh, a slower paced, uh, more personal. You know, usually my family shows up on the stream. So thank you so much and please come back. Stop scamming, man. Stop scamming, man. Thank you so much. While Russia has a large diamond industry, lab growth diamonds are becoming exponentially more affordable and common and bypass environmental blood diamond concerns. I agree with you. And I feel it's not just about diamonds. Russia does not look forward. It's using, it's not because it's Russia. It's because there's a few people on top. They privatized everything. They own it. Or they, at least they, you know, act and feel as they own the entire country. And if you have such riches basically handed to you, why would you care about researching, you know, uh, trying to develop new technologies, um, trying to somehow move technological progress. No, it's just you milking the you know the cow. It's a cash cow. Same thing with the diamonds. Um, they'll be doing it until their products will lose value, no more, no less. You know. Thank you, Boris. Thank you so much. Is the Russian tough people stereotype problematic? The tougher the times, the tougher the Russians get. I feel that the Russians are more inclined to endure their problems rather than try to change anything. Um, it's been true to some extent. But, you know, life changes. Uh, and we'll see what happens this time. Obviously, Russia is on the footsteps of a huge crisis and we haven't even scratched the surface okay this crisis will last for decades perhaps generations and we'll see what happens to russian in uh, to russians in in 20 30 years how are they going to be taking the situation what are they going to be their their um you know their um thoughts on that so thank you so much caesar's Fantastic to see you from Czech Republic. Howdy, howdy. There's a tradition of running a shadow economy in Russia in times like this. Is it growing? Yes, yes. Uh, about six months ago, I addressed this issue. Um, mafia is being reborn in Russia, and shadow economy is being reborn as well. Probably a good... Uh, let me take a note. Uh, I will give you examples. I'll make a stream out of it. Yes, good old times are back, you know. Whatever was good in the 90s, they killed it. Whatever was back, uh, bad, and there was plenty of bad. They're bringing it back, you know. <sighs> Daniel McInnes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Sending my love to Canada. And uh, stop scamming, man. Thank you again. Some gloated Russia. Could pivot economically to Asia with Russia banning gasoline and diesel exports to all but four countries. It looks less like a pivot to Asia and more like a pivot from the world. I can't argue with you. Uh, you are absolutely spot on. Um, you know, it's like there's a huge fire. Your house is on fire. And instead of trying to put the entire fire, you're just running from inside one room to another room, trying to put local local little fires out. You know, that's what they're doing. John Abira, howdy, howdy. Aaron Born Snail, Frank, two Franks in, in Texas and in Germany. Howdy, friends. Iceman, Julie W., White Lightning 777, why doesn't Putin give Russians free diesel conditioned upon them selling it outside Russia and spending money within Russia? That gets hard currency. Because he could care less. I mean, why would he do that? He's all right. He's living in Barbie land. His world is perfect. The only thing he cares about to keep on living in that Barbie land as for as long as possible. He doesn't care about problems of regular Russian people. He, he could care less, you know, as long he cares about one thing. They do not rebel. If they don't rebel, pff, why bother?
Good question from Chris Salerno. Are you scared of becoming an enemy of Russia like they do the independent journalists? I am not afraid to become an enemy of Russia because I am not an enemy of my country. I love my country. I was born and raised, okay? How can you become an enemy of your mother? Um, I want my country to shine, and I want my country to change. I want it to become run by the people for the people, okay? I want it to be a good neighbor. I want it to be peaceful, free, and um, a good place to live in. Now, if they call me an enemy, that's not going to be an enemy of Russia. It's going to be enemy of them, okay? And that's a big difference. Um, am I afraid of that? No, I'm not. Wanda from Portland, Oregon. Howdy, howdy. Greg Lewis, Storm W, Leslie Fleming, Pamela J. The picture is too much for my resolution. Apparently, it's uh, fuzzy. Uh, by the way, could you please let me know how does this picture looks looking? At, how is it looking on your, you know, telephone or television or wherever you are looking? Will Russia sell assets to fix the economy? If you mean land, probably not. Assets, um, I don't know. Can't can't really tell you. I'm sorry. Great Southern land. I I I don't know. We will see. Uh, Wolfhound twenty six X color saturation looks good on my seventy five Samsung. Hey, what is better, the old picture or this one? Which one do you like better? Because I'm using new software and I'm streaming from a different camera, not from a cell phone. It's really dark on my Android and TV. Ha, huh, interesting, because it's it's nice and, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool here where, where I'm looking at. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. The old picture looked better, in my opinion, Isma. Thank you. Old picture is better. Old picture is brighter. Okay. Nexus Lee. No, I do not live in Russia. Looks good on my TV. Can't see your tennis racket. It's still there. Picture is just dark in the back. Well, I kind of like it that way. Are the average Russian citizens aware of the gross theft and wolf to keep Putin in Barbie land? Vic, um, good question. I think so. But I think they're just, they have accepted this fact. Russia has become a very difficult place to understand and Russians are very difficult people to understand. Uh, atrocious things in their names, in their name, are done in front of their noses, and uh, they don't do anything. They just... Uh. One more question from Caesars. To take part in a shadow economy, you might need an access to some hard currency, right? Well, there's no problem in that. Yeah, there's plenty of hard currency in Russia. Um, what I meant in the stream to say that uh, people having dollars in their hands under the pillows is one thing. But the government, the companies, the government, uh, the big companies who need to, you know, um, to buy things from abroad, that's the problem. So that's, I totally leave regular people behind the picture out of the picture. Um, Crusader Damien, Russian TV doesn't seem to understand that Russia and its economy is already a vassal state to China. 
You're right. They don't understand. And I agree with that. It's as if they live in denial and people believe. You know, there's a very good phrase I overheard in uh, within the last couple of days. You know, suppose Russia is a, a, a person and the person has muscles, right? And um, there's plenty of muscles in the person can flex muscles, to, oh, you know, and all this power of flexing every single muscle in the body goes into the keeping eyes closed and, you know, as hard as possible. So you are absolutely right. right. They're living in denial. Mati Hapanen, thank you so much. Uh, the usual suspect from Finland. Thank you. You know, another um, another analogy comes to me. Not analogy, but just um, listen to this. I saw lots of theft lots of um, destruction of Russia, not to the extent of what's been going on after the war started, but before it had been pretty darn bad, okay? And theft was going on tremendous. Well, I was in business of building power plants and that's infrastructural projects. I know what kind of, um, you know, kickbacks people demanded from the government. We never dealt with the government money that was our one of our um one of our um strict rules okay because once you get involved with the government money your hands get dirty so we only build power plants for private companies because private companies paid their own money and they tried to build as cheap and as effective as possible okay so I knew, I saw, I, you know, I understood what was going on in Russia. And my understanding, um, I thought that sooner or later, everything would end. Perhaps with death of Putin, perhaps with some, like, another event. But my bet, event would happen in Russia and it would involve uh, lots of Russian people raising up. And I thought that all these rich people who have been stealing for decades from Russian budget, you know, all the Putin's friends and, you know, the big shots and they would just, within a few hours, they would jump into their cars, drive into the airports, jump on their small private jets and out of the country. And they would say something like, oh, you know what? It's been nice knowing you. Thank you. We worked here for a few years and now it's time to go back home. Wait a second. Isn't it? Are you Russians? Or is, no, no, no. It's not our home. We live in the USA. We live in Spain. We live in France. Uh, we just work there. Now we f resign and then that's it. This is how I thought it would end. But you can't do that now if you're a rich guy because you're under sanctions. Putin messed it up for everyone, uh, for the oligarchs and for everyone inside the, his system pretty darn bad. And it's a good thing. You know, I like it very much that they can't, they can't uh, run and, they, you know, they're under microscope right now. So, but, and um, kind of answering your question, they're uh, in denial. I don't understand why they are in denial now, because they have nowhere to run. Sooner or later, the day will come, they would have to answer. They can't run now. Okay, sorry, it's been... Uh, Quite a speech. Uh, it's clear, but definitely a shade darker. Okay. Are the average Russian citizens... Oops, jumped. Ladl builds. Thank you so much. Um, Pinda, when are you doing your stream with... Uh, Petersburg and me comparing the prices? Um... Not stream, but most likely we'll do a video. I was thinking towards the end of the year.
Good question from D1 Harris. What is the chance of hyperinflation in Russia in the future? Uh, about 100%. Steve Barnes. The new picture is too dark on my laptop. Please use the old one. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try to fix it. I'll try to give it a little light. Lauren Wesney, Tesla produced just under 1 million vehicles last year and on pace to produce 1.8 this year. Other car companies are doing the same. Do you know how many electric cars Chinese are pumping out? You'd be amazed. Millions and millions and millions. Uh, about every fourth car here in, new car here in Tashkent is electric and is Chinese. Okay, um, so yeah, the electric cars are coming, but Chinese, they're going to be the dominating. You need a 60 minutes producer now. <laughs> Dave, thank you so much, but what for? David Morgan, thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, my hair is darker. Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> Gina NY, thank you. I really love your show. Thanks for keeping us informed. I pray the Russian people with the revolution against Putin. I don't think uh, Russian people will will do it fast enough because I I still believe that Putin's gonna be out of the door fairly soon. We'll see. We'll see about that. Dan Coldwell. Thank you so very much for uh, sponsoring 10 people. Thank you, thank you, thank you from me and from 10 people. It's fantastic. Thank you. Famous Mainer. Howdy, howdy. Putin cannot have his money in New York and London, would be sanctioned, remember? Oh, that's not to me. That's to Kitty. We have an artificial Ivan today. Well. Mate Bowers, B Bowers, thank you so very much. Looks like from Switzerland, right? Thank you. OH3WE, do ordinary Russians have weapons at home? How could the event start a mutiny? Ordinary Russians are not allowed to have weapons at home. That's forbidden. That's one of the mortal sins in Russia because the government doesn't like armed people. Because when a person is armed, it's really hard to tell a person what to do, you know. It's really hard to take away for freedoms and to abuse them. It's much harder than if person is unarmed. So Russians are not allowed and the prison terms are atrocious if they catch you with arms. White Lightning, I have a question about a custom. Why do Russians feed wild bears porridge or beer with their home? These animals are dangerous and not trainable. Uh, I'm sorry, I've not seen one bear at someone's home. I haven't seen a bear once. I don't. That's not a question to me. I have no clue. Why they do that? <laughs> Caesars. Sorry, I can't help myself today. Um, could Russia turn into a buffer state? I don't know what a buffer state is, but I think Russia could turn into a buffer state. Could you please explain what buffer state is? KG1. Some journals report rural crime of farming machinery has increased in the UK, providing thriving black market in Russia. 
there's no black market in Russia for uh, farming machinery. I no, that's something I'm not aware of. That's not the black market. Black market is is to get that stuff inside Russia. Okay, that would be, but it's not black market. It's gray importing. Okay, so that's what I think. KG one. Uh, okay, already answered that. Jens person, uh, what will be the next big event in the war, like the Wagner mutiny? I take it another mutiny. It's very possible. Uh, something, something connected with the Chechnyans. I don't know what, and perhaps uh, some change of balance and power on the very, very top. Okay, so these three events that might happen very soon. I'm not sure which one will be next. You know, I'm not a magician, but this is what I think. Michael Silberg again, thank you so much. For the future, what has to happen so police can become decentralized, allowing true separation of powers with Supreme Court not ignored like in 93? Michael, this if this answer, uh, this question is answered, then Russia will be free. This is one of the fundamental questions, okay? And this question is, who rules Russia? It's either a strong man, and then strong man needs all kinds of help he can get. Police, army, secret police, KGB, you know, uh, attorney general office, prosecution's office, you name it, courts, that's all to the service of the strong man or the people. And if it's the people, well, you know the story, it's we are the people. Okay, so if, if something ha happens so the police becomes decentralized, that's going to be major, major, major. And that's what I am looking forward to, waiting for, and hoping for, okay? So, Janice Bur Burgess, we sang happy birthday song. Well, we didn't because you were not in the stream on Saturday. Okay, so we have three birthday girls, right? Lein, I'm not sure if it's a male or female's name. But it's time to sing. Uh, thank you so much, Mommy, for bringing up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, folks, if you wish, please cover up your ears with your hands so I don't break your ears because I'm going to be singing three times. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Janice. Happy birthday to you. Uh, it's Janice. Um, I wish you the you know, good health, many happy returns of the day. So, uh, I wish you be surrounded by the people you love and uh, people who love you. Have many smiles on your face. Happy birthday. And um, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anne. Happy birthday to you. That wasn't a good one. <laughs> um, dear Anne, thank you for being the part of Inside Russia community. And I wish you happy birthday, many happy returns. Wish you to be healthy and um, be active. You know, be always be the center of uh, attraction for all people around you. Happy birthday. And number three, um, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, ha happy birthday, 
happy birthday dear Lein, happy birthday to you um, wish you good health that's what I wish to everyone uh, lots of money wish you good people around you who can rely on who you can rely on and I wish you um, many many times to hear that someone sings happy birthday to you uh, fantastic to have you happy birthday <laughs> thank you for coming and uh, this is our little celebration thank you no I cannot sing that Putin Barbie song again you know Emily it took me uh, a lot to, to force myself to sing it <laughs> it's embarrassing It's a good thing there's no copyright strikes on the birthday song. You know, I think that any song that I sing is, uh, is uh, no copyright strikes because no algorithm would be able to, um, you know, <laughs> figure out. <laughs> I sing it so bad. I break all the algorithms. My kitty has just left the room. No wonder, Bob. <laughs> Chicken Run, what would hitting rock bottom look like when you say they hit the rock bottom next year in February? Ruble uh, trading at 150 plus. People pinching pennies. People barely able to afford food. Okay. Uh, they don't live the lifestyle they used to live. They just trying to survive. Basically, back into the USSR. We were not hungry in the USSR. Okay, we we lived like we lived for seventy years. But uh, you can hardly you can hardly call it living, if you know what I mean. And uh, this is what I think. Rock bottom. The deficit. Uh, there's no money left in the reserve fund. Uh, spending so much more than making, um, delaying, delaying wages to teachers, doctors, you know, the delaying, uh, pensions to pensioners. That's what happened back 30 years ago, you know, when we were having through, uh, we're going through very hard times. And this is, this is what I call the hidden rock bottom. Steve Barnes, <laughs> well, thanks for listening. Teresa D, I can still hear, <laughs> so you're not so bad. Thank you so much. Last 107, howdy friend. Famous Maynard, don't forget to thank Kay for his honest opinion. Well, thank you, friend. Thank you so much, friend. And you say hello to the wonderful state of Maine from me. Thunder had 180. What's happening with the rest of Russia's healthcare system? It's. Um, still there okay uh you still can go and see a doctor but it's fading okay less and less money uh fewer drugs and um, it's just the quality is becoming lower fewer doctors because lots of doctors have run away from russia um, it's just becoming of much lower quality Amir, the legend of the South. <laughs> I like that. Is Russia still exporting armaments? Leitmotiv for me? I don't think so. If it does, it does that in a big secret. 
and it doesn't make much more and it does not make money like it used to so I doubt it Eugene uh, gotta find Eugene's post I, I don't see it Where is Eugene's post? I'm not seeing it. Could you uh, repost it once more, please? Tooling 1739, the exposure for you is great, the background is darker, which I agree is better. Thank you so much. I love this picture personally, perhaps I should put more color. Uh, there's already some, but uh, we'll see. I'll play with it, it's the first time, you know. Crusader Damien, good news for the Starving West. <laughs> Bang Bang Design has released a cookbook, 100 Ways to Cook Squirrel. We are saved. I like the darker look on the video. Thank you so much, friend. And folks, hang on one second. Give me... there and back again i apologize uh okay so a couple more questions and we'll be wrapping the stream up this is monday and it means that we have quite a few streams to go and they're all gonna be interesting at least i'll be trying doing my best to make them that way Majory X, hello from Finland. Hope the Russian people will take Mother Russia back for themselves and push the government down. We believe that Russia can be a good and globally significant country in a good way. Thank you so much for still believing in Russians and in Russia. I know it's really difficult these days. Thank you. I truly hope so. Uh, I truly hope it happens. And I'm doing my best to make it happen. Okay, so... Um, Mr. Barvas, thank you so much for the super chat. This thing has an awesome feature. I can actually go and uh, look at all super chats easier. Make sure I didn't... Uh, Kai first, thank you so much. It looks like I missed it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the good words. John Schweitz, I missed it. Uh, thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, Pierre character exaggeratedly strengthening his arms forward to offer a cup of coffee. <laughs> thank you, friend. Whoa, Jason Carney comes back with a huge bang. Thank you, Jason. 
Thank you for your support. Um, would you please reveal yourself? Tell us who you are and uh, tell us a little bit more about you. You're such a mystery champion of um, super chatting on Inside Russia. Thank you so much for me and my wife as usual. And uh, thanks for huge support and for the gift of five memberships to five people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Joe's Rames, I agree that he's hero to all. Thank you. Galaxy Rider, howdy, long time no see. Uh, looks like Chechnya is getting ready to cook off. Um, well, I can tell you one thing. I am sitting, waiting every day what's going to happen. That's my popcorn is here. And I am wishing, waiting patiently and anxiously. Okay. <laughs> Crusader Damien. <laughs> All right. Agreed. <laughs> agreed. Um, Life, what ISO number do you use? Uh, I think currently I'm using 400. The aperture should should maybe be adjusted to a smaller number. Uh, the aperture is 2.8. Uh, it's the biggest I have. It's good for the you know to uh, you know for the dark environment. But anyway, just folks, give me give me a couple of days. I'll play uh, back and forth with that. That's is a new system for me, new setup. So hopefully, I'll uh, I'll uh, get I'll be spot on. Jekyll N, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From Australia, sending my love to you in Australia, folks. Um, time to wrap it up. Oh yeah, Thunderhead 180. Any updates on the refinery that was invaded? Yes, there are updates. A local uh, politician decided to seize it. Decided that it was making good money and then he made it his, okay? And uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's what privates are, private armies are for, right? Uh, for... Defending yourself and, uh, you know, offending others. <laughs> From Finland with love. Thank you. Fantastic question. If you had one minute on Russian TV, what would you say? I would just need uh, 10 seconds. Uh, I would I would have said, uh, I would say, Russians, what are you doing? Wake up. I don't know what else to say. Probably would that they're lying to you or give a couple examples of lies. J. Colen, uh again, thank you. Thank you so much. F folks, I would like to invite everyone to pray along with me. Uh, thank you for coming. This is an honor to have you here. Thank you. You're fantastic. Um, like I said, I will try to rotate the names every two weeks or so. So if you want me to mention you in a prayer, put you on the list, then please um, put a message for the mods, Lorna or Mommy, or email me. Um, that way, I will put you on, you know, here for for a prayer. Thank you so much. Let's do it. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for giving us this day. Thank you for putting food on our tables and giving us roofs over our heads. Thank you for surrounding us with people who we love and who love us. Please give us wisdom to 
keep the skies above our children's heads peaceful and clear and raise them in a way that when they grow up, they will make this world a better place. Meanwhile, please keep our children safe and healthy. Dear Lord, please help Ukraine stop the bloodshed as soon as possible. Reach out and touch the hearts and souls of all people that are capable. Um, do whatever is necessary to wake them up from their lethargic sleep so they make this decision to stop the bloodshed. Please help every single Ukrainian who's been affected um, by this terrible tragedy. Answer their prayers and make the wishes come true. Please soothe their souls. Um, please help my country, Russia, assemble the strongest angels with sharpest swords, led, um, headed by St. Michael, and send that army like a heavenly avalanche to this earth to get rid of the demons that have hijacked my country please have angels run russia so they make it peaceful loving respecting loved and respectful respected please send help to everyone who is traveling right now and asking for asylum seeking for protection um, dear Lord, bless those who are helping Ukrainians and please help all those Ukrainians that are suffering from the Russian strikes right now. Please send them help, support, protection, safety and angels. Help the single mothers who are struggling, raising their children, trying to make ends meet. Uh, please help all those who are being betrayed right now. Um, dear Lord, please help all those who are sick, the hungry, the homeless, the jobless, the addicted, the depressed, suffering from um, losing their faith. Um, not too happy about their lives, not feeling well. Please help every single person in a situation like that. Shine your heavenly light upon every person like that. So they feel your love, they feel your help and support. They feel warmth. They get up from their knees, stand, st stand strong and tall and will have a chance for a good, happy life. Dear Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to come and form this community. Thank you so much for everyone who's praying along with me right now. Please help everyone who's praying along or simply watching us pray. Please answer everyone's prayer and make everyone's wish come true. I have um, a few people I would like to ask you to help. And I'll start with a little girl. Her name is Sarah. Sarah needs your help. Um, she's not feeling well. And she's surrounded by loving family who prays for her every single hour, every minute. I am asking you to help her to ease her pain, to send her recovery, to send her angels to watch over her, to help with breathing with her lungs, you know, she's such a wonderful child and uh, she definitely needs your help and needs recovery. Please make your miracle so she gets well and she goes back home from the hospital to live with her family a happy and healthy life. Please help her mom and dad um, who are going through a hard time and who pray and pray and pray. Uh, send your angels to help them and answer their prayers, please. Also, uh, Wayne fighting two cancers needs your help. <coughs> Stefan from Sweden, the highwayman, David Porter, his family, and everyone in Chernovtsi. Susan Marshall, 
um, John Lee and Lee McMahon, Meta Spencer, Pamela J, Michael Yukon, Elena, Natasha, Jake, Michael, Olya, Dasha, Sky, Bonnie, Svetlana, um, Dirk, Angelic at Life, Randolph, Grace Philosophy, um, Rafaela, Allison Dave Moyes, Mr. Dean Spooner and his church called Our uh, Savior Lutheran Church, Lisa Kumrian, Susie Mailer, Karen, uh, Liz, Lori Miles' husband, um, Taylor Fleming, Hena, um, Vasilin Lubomirov, Liz Dumbrell and her relatives, Anne Larson, her family and daughter, Hena, Darla, um, White Lightning, George Ruberty, uh, Jason Corner, who recently had surgery, he needs recovery, Jenny Stevenson, Jay Spike, Leslie Fleming's daughter, Boss Simon, Sam from Kiev, Anna in Poland, Scan family's daughter and grandson, um, and Summer 613 mother. She is she needs recovery. Dear Lord, please help all children who have been affected and uh, from Ukraine. Please um, send your angels to help them and uh, help all children who are not feeling well. Send them recovery, please. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, friends. Fantastic to see everyone again. Thank you. Uh, my honor and my pleasure to have so many of you here. Um, let's do it again tomorrow. I invite you for another stream, another message. Uh, I hope you will find this interesting, and I hope you found today's one interesting. You're awesome, and you rock. Uh, and before I sign off, I would like to ask you to join me in saying out loud the usual, as loud as you can. Carthago de Lenda Est.